our Tuesday, March the 29th agenda session. I now call this meeting to order. Could I have a motion on the minutes, please? We have a motion to approve with a proper second. With no objections, the minutes will stand as required. Uh, this afternoon, under ordinances, final reading. Uh, we won't read this at this time. Uh, Councilwoman Hill, any questions or con concerns about 5A? No, sir. Thank you. All right, Madam Clerk, <clears throat> under 6A, ordinances first read. 11519 entitled moratorium on the acceptance of short term vacation rental applications for non owner occupied rental properties, which are not the primary residence of the applicant for a period beginning March 22, 2022, up to 9, 2023. All right, uh, Council, if you will notice, um, I have added in your packet an amendment that I would uh, hope that we could present this afternoon, and it basically the beginning date from March the 22nd to the effective date of the ordinance, which would be uh, April 5th. That would give uh, applicants an additional uh, two weeks from the March 22nd date. And I did receive uh, an email from a couple of individuals that said, hey, we just submitted our application last Friday. And is there anything you can do with the date? And I felt like maybe uh, making the ordinance effective on the uh, effective date would uh, help these individuals. Uh, they were uh, local residents of the city of Chattanooga. So uh, tonight, if you could consider that amendment, I would appreciate it. Councilman Ledford. Mr. Chairman, on this particular ordinance, I've had, uh, as we all have, and one of the questions I was hoping the city attorney would be able to clear up is this does not place a moratorium on operating a short-term vacation rental that is already in compliance with the city, correct? No, sir. Those are in full operation. They are grandfathered in at this point in time. You're simply dealing with new applications that would be coming after a specific date. So this is basically a pause button on the application process as we work through some of the issues that we've been presented and have been presented for quite some time now. Yes, sir. And okay. only as to non-owner occupied. And this is for only non-owner occupied. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. Uh, Councilman, um, in the, well, uh, let's see. I just read it. Oh, moratorium on the acceptance. Presented uh, in an open forum. Yeah, thank you. And, and answered by the city attorney. Okay. Thank, thank you, sir. Councilwoman Dotley. Uh, for this one, for the amendment and on the effective date of this ordinance, would that be the date that it potentially passed, uh, which will be April the 5th? April the 5th. April 5th. That's okay. correct. That's mm -hmm. all. Thank you. All right. Councilwoman Hill. Thank you, Chair. Um, there's a, a lot to be thought about as it relates to short-term vacation rentals. Um, and I think it might be useful to, you know, talk about some of that at our meeting that's more attended later this evening, but um, the couple that that are about that just put in, they emailed me as well, perhaps they emailed all of us, um, and they made the point that they have, they have um, invested their life savings in property and that they were going to quickly be putting their application in. Um, I don't think that they're the only people that are currently investing their life savings in a property to uh, put in an And so as I think about the, the fairness, I agree that a moratorium on non probably in the best interest of Chattanooga long-term, um, the fairness of putting this in as early as April 5, feels, um, well, it feels unfair. Um, so I, I would like our body to consider back a little bit more, um, whether that's a th um, perhaps to May 10th, that would be four weeks after the passage. 
Um, I think also there may be some kind of 60 day considered. Um, I didn't go so far out as 60 under, but I do wonder what you all as the body might consider for that. If in fact we have people who are investing intentionally for this, just to add a little compassion to the, um, roll out of something like this. Love y'all's thoughts. I don't see any lies, but I will, I will. Um, I think if there had been individuals that were perhaps close to submitting an application, I would have felt like they would have contacted us just like the people in Lookout Valley did. And I did uh, email them back and they confirmed that they, application so uh we've received you know numerous emails uh for and against the moratorium so i feel like it's been and people are aware of of the moratorium if you will uh in my opinion i think uh, making it on the effective date uh, that still gives people applications in that are perhaps close to this and um, and and let me let me stress one other thing even though it's uh, at this current time it says through the end of the year basically uh, if if we can work in an efficient manner and get uh, the issue addressed we can certainly take the more applications off once we have an amendment addressing the concerns that we have. So there's nothing saying other than it has to be for nine months other than the date that's on this uh, amendment. But we can always go back and make that time shorter if we come up with a solution sooner. Like it's going to be for an attorney. Or, or even nine months, if if we can come up with some solutions. Well, I, I hear what you're saying. Um, however, I foresee, based on the research that I am doing, uh, that the our housing stock is being negatively impacted by non-owner operated. Um, short-term vacation rentals. Um, it's inflating the cost. It's actually removing housing. Um, I think we, we are headed into a conversation about do we want lot, do we want housing stock? Um, and so for me, Chairman, I see that this like a moratorium. Um, I think I think that that is where we're headed. Um, and so I doubt that it'll be nine months. I anticipate it will be for the foreseeable future. And so that's why I, not to try to create some kind of gold rush of getting people into the application process, but more if we put ourselves in the shoes of someone who was hoping to get an application in May 1, one week isn't going to help them. I mean, you're a builder. How often do you tell somebody the painter will be there on Monday and they're not there till Thursday? Certain things we require to be able to apply. So just to ask for each of you to consider that, um, I, th I guess um, I would, I would ask that we consider making an official amendment um, to make it May 10th to at least give people a full month. So I'll, I'll bring that up at six. Thank you. Councilman Ledford. Phil, our ordinance is going to affect usually two weeks. Is this one of the items that is uh, slated for two weeks or is it worded for automatic? It is uh, stated to be immediately, immediately. Uh, here upon final. It would require two readings, so it will take two weeks to be able so but upon it does stay immediately. So upon final reading, it is effective. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, 
something to consider. I do appreciate making plans as a small business owner. I plan. I think that maybe we should need to possibly give some think or thought to a little time. Maybe it's not a month, but, um, and I want to remind, uh, and, and the chairman made a good point. If we, if we were to aggressively pursue resolution and made it a priority, um, we could lift the moratorium much sooner than um, I, I hope it doesn't continue on. I hope that we work to find a solution uh, that fits for our community because in my conversations with constituents today, my phone was burning up. Uh, although we don't have it in district four, people have an opinion and I'm certainly happy to, to listen to it and it helps me make a better, more informed decision. Um, it's definitely uh, a little bit more time, but we also have the process in which they would go through. And so I ask myself and think, non-owner occupied short-term vacation gets have we actually approved in the last year i don't know if caleb do you know off the top of your head any in the last year if, if caleb if you don't mind come down Are you speaking to how many have been heard, have a hearing, no, or just total non-owner? How many this body has actually passed non-owner occupied? None? This, this body? None. None. Okay. Correct. As far as those that you've had a hearing for, the non-owner occupied that have been received enough objections to, okay. to warrant a hearing. Yeah, but, there, but there, there have, the city has granted obviously many Cor yes okay just what yeah because they i want to say it's the opposition of, of four letters it was 213 okay was right about ballpark of 200 okay chairman that's all i've got right now i'm just okay. I'm, I'm pondering the councilwoman's in the in the spirit of fairness to folks who have the process or thinking about the process that maybe there is some sort of and that could I, I, I would have assumed that if anybody was close or working on one, that they would have reached out and contacted us like the people in Lookout Valley did. But obviously it's given people more time to get in these applications for the short-term vacation rentals that we're having a problem with. Councilman Smith. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, forgive me, I've, I missed a lot of the conversation about this topic last week. Um, I mean, some of the concern that I have heard over this wanted a moratorium because of housing stock, or we wanted a moratorium because outside investors are buying up our, you know, our local housing and, you know, turning it into short-term vacation rental. They're not invested in our community, um, within our community. So, you know, depending on why it is we're really doing this, um, and Councilwoman Hill makes a good point in that. Are we really talking about lodging stock or housing? It's it's a very legit question because if we're talking about uh, wanting more housing stock and less lodging, I see this being more permanent. And the resident that we don't allow short-term vacation rental. But if the concern is outside investment into our community to take money out of our community, that's a different story altogether. Um, and there may be a way to deal with this, uh, to the chairman's point of not taking nine months or making it permanent, but thinking of more creative ways to deal with it, um, over the next several months, such as, and Phil, you can let me know if you have an answer to this or not, but there may be ways of, of stating, you know, non-owner occupied, if the primary owner or owner of record of the property lives beyond 30 minutes from the property or, or something along those lines so that our local residents, people that live in homes that plan to use them for short-term vacation rental that are in our community have the opportunity to conduct that type of business, knowing that 
they are committed to ensuring that the community is well taken care of around those properties as opposed to somebody in some other state. Um, but some of those questions, I think, are better answered by what it is, you know, what problem we're potentially trying to solve uh, with the moratorium, the changes. Uh, I'm just putting it out there as, as a concern. I think extending the date, it just, it just creates a mad rush, uh, obviously, but there are people that are in the middle of um, big investments potentially uh, as well. So uh, I'm, for me, it, it doesn't matter as much for constituents in District 3, but I think it's a big topic for the entire city and, and whatever we do, who knows what that has expanded to at some point in time. Um, but I definitely see this being an extended conversation to better define what it is that we're trying to accomplish or trying to solve uh, by putting this moratorium on in the first place. Um, but with that, that's all, Mr. Chair. Councilwoman Hill, I'll, I'll recognize you. I wanted to kind of respond to um, the vice chair since he wasn't here last week. But I, I think the reason uh, for me bringing forth the moratorium <clears throat> was basically three reasons. One, affordable housing concerns, enforcement concerns, and saturation rate concerns. And those are the concerns that we were hearing over and over by uh, people that addressed us, the constituents uh, from some council people up here on this dais. Those are the concerns that I was trying to address by offering the uh, moratorium on this. Councilwoman Hill. Thank you, Chair. Um, Saturation, affordable housing, and um, enforcement, all are things that I was understanding we were going to be talking about in strategic planning. Was it next week? Is this on the yeah, short-term vacation rental? You know, Ken bringing up the we have some ability to do something within a 30-mile radius. Um, I believe that's unconstitutional. There, there's a lot of things that, and I think when we make a decision for our city, two and a half weeks, right? So uh, I I mean, I know that we've had Chris Anderson working on a short-term vacation rental um, rewrite ordinance and he's going to present to us to talk to us about what does saturation look like? Councilwoman Coonrod has been asking these questions. I've been asking them, What? how is this impacting our city? What are and anecdotal. Um, and I feel like in making that rational case, we have something to stand on as we move forward with whatever the order on mind um, about, about this. I, I, I do think that in moving outside of our standard legislative process on this, that, um, you know, here we are at 10 minutes to five when we've got a long meeting ahead of us and have had a long day already. And this is uh, maybe, um, not going to get the thought that it needs. And I say that as someone who has done a great deal of research on short-term vacation rental legislation, believes strongly that we need to revamp the whole process. Um, I, I just don't, uh, <laughs> I mean, Ken was on vacation last week. The only place that I saw this reported was the Chattanooga and then it got on next door and then it got on Facebook. I don't think that we can assume that every person that is out there sweating painting a short-term vacation rental right now is tuned in and checking those three sources. Um, so I, I would disagree that there has been appropriate amount of public input um, or awareness on this topic. Um, big, big conversation. And I, I just like us to, to do things very well, dot our I's and cross our T's. All right, any other questions or comments on 6A? All right, we'll move to resolutions 7A, please. A resolution authorizing the Chief of Police to execute a contract with Thompson and Reuters West for clear law enforcement plus an ENCLR Prolex LPR software application subscription, subscriptions for a three-year term for year one in the amount of $54,000, year two not to exceed $55,000, and year three not to exceed $57,000, for total contract amount not to exceed $165,000 for the three-year term. 
right. Any questions or comments on 7A? All right, that takes us to Parks and Public Works. And I believe, uh, Councilman Hester, you covered B, C, and D last week in our committee. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Just any questions or comments concerning B, C, or D? Councilwoman Burrs. Mr. Chair, this isn't about B, C, or D. It was about the beginning of the agenda. A couple of comments. I noticed at the very beginning there wasn't a place for us to mention the hearing that's tonight. Oh, okay. Let I, I do Go have Councilman Lefford. I'm, I'm assuming he's got a question about one of these items. We can come back to that. Okay. All right. Councilman Ledford. Uh, just real quick. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I sent an email on item C. Uh, really, I want to stress uh, the uh, response that I've gotten on social media emails through the council that pickleball is really very popular and uh, more people are asking for pickleball than they are tennis. So anything we can do to push that uh, towards the pickleball, uh, I, I, boy, have I been introduced to a world of uh, uh, that I had no idea. And uh, I, I'm actually researching paddles now. So uh, <laughs> I guess that's where I'll be, I'll be heading to. Tom. Uh, yes. Um, we're working with the Parks Department, Parks and Rec. And right now we have a little time to work with you and the community on preference for tennis and pickleball. Uh, the, this contract that you're uh, awarding tonight, we're in good shape because it calls for striping for both tennis and pickleball on the same courts. I wouldn't recommend that because you know if you've ever if you're a tennis player you wouldn't want all those other lines on there you don't recommend striping for both i i, I personally don't I, i'm gonna tend to agree with you tom which is why i'm bringing this up now and, and that's all chairman i don't need to get into depth we can talk offline yeah. but i think we're on the same page tom. but if we if if the parks department working with you and with your constituents and the people who use that that uh, facility can figure out how to stripe each court maybe a mix will we can end up getting a deduct because we're calling for both stripes on all the courts understood so let's have we have flexibility for a little while yes sir let's have some conversation thank you thank oh. you chairman councilwoman i'll uh, get to your question in just a minute let me just go ahead and go through the agenda right quick uh purchasing questions i think we have seven items uh, on tonight's purchase request. Any qu any questions or comments on any of those items? All right. April the 5th, our two-week agenda. Questions or comments on any of those items? All right. Looking ahead to future considerations. Anything on future considerations that needs to be brought before the council? Councilman Ledford. Chairman, thank you. I did have a question, but the administration answered uh, on the uh, traffic infraction devices. Oh, and, yeah. I, and they answered it completely for okay. me. Uh, the, the question I had was revolving around state law. Okay. And I, I have no questions further, but if the administration wants to cover it real quick. You're welcome to. But Thank you. And I appreciate them getting back so soon. All right. All right, any other questions or comments, future considerations? All right, we have no departmental reports and no committees this afternoon. Uh, Councilwoman Burrs, do you want to hit your light and we'll take your question about public comments? Councilwoman Burrs. Yeah, I don't have any questions about it. Um, I just wanted to review with council um, that we have, reviewed the law, we have looked at everything possible, and with the meeting tonight and the vote next week, uh, the public meeting we had two weeks ago, and the public meetings that have occurred in the districts, we meet the requisites of law. Uh, however, uh, if anyone has any questions to, at, on council relative to tonight, uh, 
Joda's here to uh, administration. Mayor's office had nothing to do with any of this. We got the data from uh, the office that crunches the numbers and does the data because they had the programs. Um, they gave us the data. Their only instruction was, and it came from me, I take full responsibility, is follow the law. Follow the law and, um, and, and as applied to the 2020 census. And all of that was put online three weeks ago. There's nothing different than any kind of information. There are people that seem to have some incorrect information. And I don't want my colleagues to be put uh, in a difficult situation tonight. So I want to make sure that they that they have no questions about anything that went on. So if you would ask, since okay. I don't have the thing. Sure. So are there any lingering questions about um, how the map was put together, how the data was collected? Um, Councilwoman Coonrod. Thank you, Chair. Um, in fact, I had emailed Joda and Chris when we first got the map and was told that they, they didn't have enough employment employees that could work on specific requests from council members. Uh, I wanted to see I wanted to see the data that shows uh, based on what the uh, slides that we were given. And uh, we, we're transparent in this setting is that when I met with Chris to look at the map is this is what we have. Do you agree with it? Do you have any changes? And prior to that had been specifically told you don't want to be the council person that's not going along with everything. We should never be told that from anybody that worked with administration. And I had an issue with it. It, we we had some words that we shared with each other and I reached out to the chair. When we're asking for information as a council person, we should be able to get that information and we shouldn't be excluded or say, go to the committee, which the committee was with you three. We just got presented with the information after the fact of whoever drew the map. Now here, here's my... Once, here's here's what I need, what I asked before. In the slides, it stated, or it was voiced when the presentation was given, is that my district, as well as other districts, we lost people in the in according to the numbers. And when I looked at it, it showed that I well previously we had 20,000 and some odd people, and then my district got reduced with 16, 17,000 people. But I didn't see the demographics of the people. If we're continuously, what I'm hearing is that black people are leaving your district. Where, did, where is it? Show me that data to say where they're, they've left my district. Well, and if we need to get increased numbers, and when I looked at the results of after we've drawn, seen the drone map, now I have 20,000 some odd people. Some districts have less than 20,000. And from my perspective, um, I would just like to see additional maps to show, okay, uh, if we keep the number of black people that's in everybody's district currently, because even if we leave it that way, our districts will still be, we'll still have three black districts, a majority black districts. That will still be the same. My concern is that when I look at the map, and I see the number of black individuals that have been moved out of District 1, moved out of District 3, and I'm concerned about that. There were 1,400 of us, meaning black people, have been moved out this district and placed in a district that's already majority black. No one has said or asked on council which district should be a majority black district, which district should be a swing district, and I get that you know, that some may understand that the law is saying that we supposed to have three. I'm simply stating and, and have stated it before that we're not in that space now. We're in the 21st century. Back then to advocate for three council positions, yes, I get that. 
We've done it. We now are in a, a situation where uh, a times where black people are getting elected to council and to be ignored or, you know, to be overlooked and pushed to the side because no one wants to think in that way. We now have four council districts that are black. The data based on the number where black people are residing reflects that. So the conversation should be about if we're going to maintain these four black seats, not continue to minimize that. And because what council has looked like historically has been mostly majority white. OK, well, let's level the playing field. I'm a chess player. Let's have four white districts, four black districts and have a swing district for one of them. That makes sense to me when I look at the data. But when we can't get the information that we need as council people, it's, it's very disturbing. And when we have constituents questioning us or our ability to be on the committee and ask questions or, you know, we weren't, I wasn't privileged to the meeting. I don't know. But I think some of the statements have been unfairly to the people who've been on the committee. And if, you know, what I'm hearing you say is that the only direction was this, you know, to make sure you follow the law. You know, constituents are like, well, what else did they do? And so I've, you know, oh, go ahead. She are you, go are ahead. you ready? Are you ready for a response, Councilwoman? Uh huh. Okay. okay. All right, hit hit your lot, Councilwoman Burrs. So oh, I, I, I I'm there was a lot packed in there. So let me see. So number one, we fall. Let me let me finish, and then because what I'm going to ask you is so I'm not getting hold of what you need, all right? So the instruction was to follow the law and and the law was put up on the screen and that is um, you follow the 2020 census and you go with your numbers, give or take 10%, um, and, and the districts that were mostly impacted, and it, it's really, uh, Councilman led for his fault because his District 4 grew and because District 4 grew it, it kind of was a domino I had to take more which meant and by the way I am pretty much a swing district and which meant that Councilman Hester had to take more and so we the, the lines had to be massaged to uh, to to make sure they were they followed the raw law. Now, in that, and and we went over that, and it may have been when you were out of town, but we showed the breakdowns. Uh, if we showed the breakdowns, but no, you were here because you have questioned a lot. What's a minority? Is it black? Is it everybody of color? How does that work out? You remember that discussion? It's it's on the record. And no matter which way we went, um, we found out that the districts were still balanced. Now, what I think I heard you say was that it looks like your district lost black people. Is, is that what you said? But you couldn't get the data to back that up. Is that what you said? Okay, hold oh, on. Let me can, hit, um, hit your line and, and let's see if we can have some clarification. Yes. yes, yes. Can, Councilwoman Coonrod. Hello. Yeah, what was told from the podium is that I've lost black people or from my district. And I'm, yeah, when the presentation was made, not just my district, but other districts too, but I'm concerned about my, and I'm asking, well, can you show me that? Or provide a map where everybody represents the same equal amount of people. Uh, hit your light again. Hit, hit your light again. So, um, I don't know the color of the people you lost. I really don't. What I did see was a before, well, I didn't see it. We all saw it. It was up on the screens. You saw that, of the before and after. In other words, what it looked like from the last census and what it looks like now. And so if you 
do the math, you'll see if, in fact, you lost people of color, that's it. And I'm thinking you want something else, and that's what I'm not getting. We showed who lost what, where, how, and percentages. So you obviously have a question, and you want to see something, and that's what I want to make sure you see. I, I, I think we've answered all those, and I'm it's my ignorance. I, I'm not hearing you, I guess. What is it you want? Well, Councilwoman Coonrod. Thank you. What I would like to see is a map that reflects the 1,400 black people to still remain in Ken's district, the 200 or some black people that's in Chip's district to still remain, that black people still remain in our districts. Because what I see, the black people that have moved out of my district, it's okay that they live in Hickson. It's okay that they live in North Chattanooga. It's okay that they've moved to East Ridge or wherever they move left for the district. It's okay. And what we shouldn't be doing is grouping those people back just to say we want to ease them back in five, we want to put them back at eight, we want to put them back in nine. That's, to me, that's not fair representation. Because our districts, if you keep the black people where they already are, we're still going to be a majority black district. Maybe what my district need is some added white people or, or in five or in eight. Let's balance it out. We still will have a majority black district. And to me, and it's just my personal opinion, when you group us all into these districts, it put, put us at, at an economic disadvantage. And that's in my personal opinion. My district can't compete because we don't have disposable income to even decide uh, to have a grocery store. And we got to, all I'm asking is to show me a map of what it would look like. And that should be something simple that we can do and look at. So, okay. Go ahead. Hit, hit her. Hit you lot. So, we did do that. I don't think we have the addresses to show. We did, we did mega numbers okay and where we drew the lines as far as i understand we were looking at people not what color they were as it turned out as it turned out um the outcome was there were people see i'm not i don't know where we're getting the idea that some black people went from your district to chip's district and now we're trying to move them back. I, 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 it's coming from somewhere. And I don't, if we show you, I don't know that we're capable of showing a map. We're, sh we're capable of showing lines, but I'm not sure we're capable of showing an individual location, address, race. We didn't look at, at data that way. Um, if you can explain exactly what you want, and you don't have to do it here, there's no information that's um, offline. I, I didn't know that you were told these things. I, I wish I had known about that. But the bottom line is, that was then, this is now. Exactly what do you need to fix whatever your concern is and if we have the data that way, it can come to you. Just you, you, that's different from what we've already given. We've shown the before and after. We've shown the, the before and after racially. Uh, we've done it with black and we've done it with of color both ways because you asked for that. I, I, if you could just explain to me what it is that we haven't, sent you we can do that let me hey chief come up just a minute please and and i think this is something maybe we can discuss a little bit more thoroughly uh next week in strategic planning we do have strategic planning uh madam clerk i'm gonna ask that this be placed on the agenda and i'm gonna see if we can get from what i understand we're looking for some data that shows uh i guess the uh the black numbers before or as as they were in in this last 
uh, redistricting and and the black numbers as they are in this proposed map. Is that is that basically Councilwoman Coonrod what you're asking for? Yeah, I got you. In other words, I, and I don't know if that's possible just to, I mean, when you say a map drawn, basically then what you're just looking at is is numbers. I mean, like literally, the, you're just looking at numbers. And, and, and let me, you mentioned that I lost blacks from my district it, and it wasn't an intentional moving blacks out to put them in another district. It was basically where I lost my black constituents were in a neighborhood that, that I did feel like that whole area needed to be in district two. Uh, and, and so that's where that's, that's where those numbers, I, I, to be honest, I never asked the question, how many blacks would I lose? I just said, you know, it looks like to me it'd make more sense if this community was in District 2. That happened to be, I, I guess, after looking at the numbers, where where a lot of concentrated uh, number of, of black voters were or black constituents were. It, it was never an intentional thing to move blacks in or out of a district. It was simply, to your point, it was simply looking at the numbers. And that's how we arrived at what the map looked like, at least in District 1. So, Chief, is it possible next week to try to come up with a map that, you know, sort so of keeps the districts like they are, but just adjust the numbers based on the numbers, not trying to create a, 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 a majority black district? I think the first question, which was, can we provide the data of, of, of residents by race broken out? Um, prior to the map that has been drawn and now, that's certainly possible. Okay. I would say capacity-wise, in order to produce a map in a week, which has a totally new framework, uh, I think that would stretch our capacity. Um, and, and candidly, I, I would ask that the council consider using uh, uh, something like its UTC contract to generate that. It does put a lot of work on our GIS team and takes us away from other priorities. Okay. And I, I do want to be very clear that this administration has no position on the council's redistricting process whatsoever. And we firmly believe that y'all have the, the responsibility and purview over the process to choose your maps and and so i just i just want to underscore that you know we were acting on uh uh the the clear purview and, and guidance from the redistricting committee and so um if there was to be a new process with a new framework that would take a significantly longer period of time okay uh all right so you can have that by next week or or sometime the the numbers, not the map. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, I think that'll at least be a first step of what Councilwoman Coonrod is asking for. Let me go to Councilman Hester, and then we'll I think to to, to really um, measure this, uh, I think the answer is more complex than um, we should consider because I guess all across America is a black flag too. Uh, as far as here, folks are moving black. African Americans moving to Ottawa, they're moving to East Ridge, to East Brainerd, we're moving to rural North Georgia. So it's so we can't measure that as far as that. And and when they when I had loss as far as gains and loss in my district, even when we moved out to Mary Hills, in which uh the vice chair, he 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 was kind of upset. He was losing some of his uh, minorities there but even when we move out to to get that uh balance that two th twenty thousand still when we moved out i still i didn't lose any minorities by doing that so we're just trying to be fair and balanced when when we made the uh decision to stretch out our boundaries it, we were look we weren't looking at people i mean wasn't looking at ethnicity we're, we're looking at just numbers of people it just happened to uh when we stretch beyond our boundaries it, there were still minorities in those areas so we, we were very fair about that good to answer your question ah, thank you thank you councilwoman burks 
Okay, well, um, I think that what you just said, Mr. Chair, is the data we already have and have made public. We have shown the before figures. They were on the screen. I have copies of it. And we have shown the after figures by race, by all of that. So I would, I would hate for us to be complicating an issue that has been has happened very cleanly and straightforwardly. Um, I think that there's a lot of noise on the line because of uh, people out in the public misunderstanding or intentionally misunderstanding because they weren't at the table. And actually, they were. Every meeting that anything, decisions were made have been public and have been and they have been at the table. Now, um, I can tell you right now that the kind of data, we can show the before and after exactly what Ms. Coonrod is looking for. I don't know, I think the Chief of Staff is correct. We didn't go, as I understand, we meaning the logistics, uh, the data department, didn't go house by house and there is the fact that people are moving on their own. So what I would like for this not to do is to turn in to a three-ring circus uh, because people are lobbing things out there that have no basis in truth. Not, not, not Councilwoman Coonrod. I think her question was a righteous question, and I think we've given the answer to that. I don't know why people have moved. Uh, this has been one of the most straightforward processes, and it has been followed under the tutelage of our legal department. Tonight will be a public meeting where we get community input, not community argument, community input. Now, allegedly, and I'm saying all this because it should be of record, allegedly every district that needed to met with their district, because that's the most intimate community input that we can get. Now we're having the big meeting. Every one of these were public meetings. We're having the big meeting so that we get the big community input. And if I'm understanding you correctly, you said two minutes for one hour, and it's just for input. It's not for argument. That, it's for that's, input. That's correct. So tonight will will be about input. That's it. Uh, we're listening. We're, we're not starting. It's a time for the council to listen, and then at another time, if uh, council has, uh, you know, any input, and and maybe we save it for strategic planning next week. But this will be strictly a, a public input session. We are listening. We're we listening. are not responding. That's correct. At this point, okay. So um, I think that when something this important happens, I think you do it straight. I think you do it according to law. That's federal law, state law, and we've done that. And sometimes when we start politicizing, uh, as we saw our brothers and sisters doing in the county, you can end up having a very difficult situation. And so this county has acted, uh, this, uh, this committee and it's been a committee of the whole. There have been no secret meetings of the smaller group has acted honorably and according to law. If there is anyone that feels that there have not been sufficient meetings and have all the copies of the law that people have sent in, tonight and next week will cure that. Okay. Um, and so I would hope that council, um, argument like this is seductive. It's non-productive. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to take two more comments about this redistricting. I've got a lot from Councilwoman Coonrod and Councilwoman Dotley. Uh, we can continue this discussion next week at strategic planning, and that's really where this discussion needs to happen. Councilwoman Coonrod. Thank you, Chair. And I'm going to be done after I stay, state what I've got to stay, say. And... Uh, <clears throat> I'm a, although Councilwoman Burrs, that you 
feel like that my answer to my question has been addressed. It hasn't. I can read and I've read the presentation over and over again and I've looked at the numbers. What I'm asking, and Chip, he hinted to it exactly what I'm asking. The Before you created this map, based on the numbers that you already had, so the first slide with the numbers, that's when I had a minimum of 16,000, 17,000 or whatever those numbers are. What I'm asking for is the same amount of black people that's in the category where it says black. Those same people, amount of black people still reside in the district when you create the new map for the 2025. What would those numbers, what would a map then look like? What, what would the area of the districts be drawn like then if the same set of people which are black people live in those, continue to reside in three or two or wherever they were at, leave them there and then draw the map. And the map that reflects that, that also shows where each district has the same amount of people. So Chip wouldn't have 18,000 per se. Somebody else have 16,000 and I have 20,000. Nine council members represent the same equal amount of people. We don't we don't have that map because we don't have the same equal amount of people in the district. That's what I'm asking. Now I I do know the pressure has been real hot on you, and I know how I am when the pressure get on me too. Let, so I feel y'all yeah, understand. Let, let, let's, but let, all let, I'm let's, asking, let's just keep this okay. information driven. That's fine, Chip. But and, please, and, can you just we'll, allow me to finish, please? We'll, just, let, we'll get your data. Okay. I, well, I don't can want I please? This to turn finish. into a debate. At this it's time. not a debate. Okay. And Chip, I'm going to just ask you this. Every time that I'm speaking, please don't interpret it like I'm in debating somebody because you've got a habit of stopping I, me when I'm talking. I, just I'm ask, please. I'm trying to move this meeting along. I, and that's what I Chip, do as chair. I understand. And I'm fixing to be out of this chair. And then whoever's Chip, next can. I understand, build Chip. That. But all I'm asking but is. Please to, go ahead with the information that you need. Okay. Thank if you. I could continue, I would like to finish without being interrupted. Please go ahead. Because you don't do this to anybody Please go else. ahead. I don't fact, have to end this meeting I'm like done. we've done before. Okay, I'm done, Chip. I'm done. I'm Thank done. You. Councilwoman Dotley. Um, my comment was just for the record. I did attend Councilwoman Coonrod's redistricting meeting Thursday. There was a question presented about where the data originally came from. Um, and that was from NPR with NAACP. Uh, her and the comment was it came from the census, but there was no information as far as how, uh, what that number actually was. So I wanted to make sure that that was in the record, that people understood that the numbers that you see on um, on our data website, all of the districts and how they're broken down does come from the 2020 census. And I wanted to put that number in the record for the population of Chattanooga, which is 181,099 people. So when you take that number, you can take that to our data website and they can begin to see uh, those numbers come together. So again, the census population for 2020, regardless of what you thought about the census process, uh, the population is 181,099 people. Um, you can divide that by nine. And once you begin to look at the slides, uh, specifically slide, slide seven, you can see those numbers add up. And so I just wanted to make sure that that was in the record because a point of confusion started there. It started with people not knowing the the data went up and I think our data team did a great job in putting it up. But the, the question was, where did this data originate? And we say the census, but I don't think a number was given. And that started, that started a lot of confusion because people didn't know what, what that number was, even though, you know, you can Google it or whatever. Uh, but I just wanted to make sure that people know that the census data comes from, the data came from the census population, which again is 181,099 people in the city of Chattanooga. So I just wanted to make sure that that data was there, that it was on record and people understood that that is the number that our data team started with and that's what they're working with. Thank you. Mr. Vice Chair, we're done with redistricting. Do you have another question? I have a question. It's somewhat related, but not in this conversation. It is of the chief. Okay. And chief. It, is, it is a request more than just a question. 
Hey, Chief, tonight we're taking public comment on this topic. Is there any possibility, if if it seems uh, warranted, to have a brief um, either explanation or slide of a few of the rules that we need to follow for redistricting? It may help. For example, I've heard questions about lines based on demographics. Well, there are certain rules that have to be followed. Census tracts need to be kept together. Every line that moves affects districts on both sides or maybe even three districts at a time. You can't arbitrarily pick a neighborhood, for example. So there are certain rules in redistricting that I believe needed to be followed. It might be helpful for the public who's going to make comment to understand that that those are some of the guidelines that were followed. Yes, I will go and uh, grab a slide from the presentation that we provided to this council, and we will just reiterate that. So uh, ahead of public comment, if that's okay with uh, uh, you, council, and okay with the chair, uh, uh, just to provide some context. Okay. All right. All right. I'm seeing no other lights at this time, so uh, at this moment, we'll be adjourned until 6 o'clock.